Hey guys, it's Rob Sipek with Paperless Student. In today's video, I'm going to do an honest, practical review of the iPad Pro 2018. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your studies or your business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when I release a new video. If you're interested in seeing how I use my iPad on a daily basis for my studies, make sure you check out my other channel, Paperless Student Studies, and I will put a link to that channel in the description down below. Today's video is sponsored by Tutoring with Maria. She offers online proofreading for students and young professionals who want to put their best foot forward in their work. After putting all that effort into your writing, your mistakes and oversights can drive down your grade or your professional review. She will proofread your essay, PowerPoint, blog, or any kind of document to ensure you share accurate content that lets your excellence shine. If you're interested in knowing more, go ahead and check out her website, Tutoring with Maria. I will put a link in the description down below. Now let's get started with this review. You guys know I don't do tech reviews. This is going to be a very practical review. The iPad Pro 2018 has great specs on paper and no one can dispute that, but I am more interested in the practical side of things. First thing we'll talk about is the price. Obviously, you guys know from my previous video, I think the price is ridiculous. I feel the iPad Pro 2018 was priced on unsaid promises. I've always believed Apple should have released a different operating system for the iPad Pro series. I've expected it since 2015 and nothing has happened. Three years later, they're still not talking about it. Am I the only one who finds it ridiculous that my iPad Pro 2018 that costs over $2,000 runs the same operating system as the iPhone 5S? Apple released a tablet powerful enough to run Mac programs, but didn't bother to release any programs of their own to demonstrate that. Now we're waiting for Adobe Photoshop, whenever that will be released. In the meantime, buy this tablet because it has potential. Let's talk about the build. The iPad Pro 2018 is beautiful. The small bezels are beautiful. They give the iPad Pro a very classy look, which I like. It feels light and well balanced, which I also love. But it's definitely not a new design from Apple. But hey, I have to say, a 12.9 inch iPhone 5S looks fantastic. The gray space color that I got, I absolutely love. At the end of this video, I'll be answering your questions that you guys asked me in the previous video because I asked you if you have any questions for me. Let's talk about the Face ID. It is ridiculously accurate. And I love the fact that it can pick my face from any angle, which is very impressive. I have to be reminded every time to remove my hand from the camera. Next, they introduced the USB-C port. For starters, all my accessories from the previous iPad Pro and my iPhones immediately rendered useless. I feel like Apple is just trying to force our hand or force my hand to buying new pricier accessories. <sighs> Why can I connect my iPad Pro to a computer straight out of the box? I'm a huge Apple fan. So believe me, I have always loved some of the inconveniences that come with using Apple devices. I have enjoyed most of them, to be honest, but this, the cable that shipped with my iPad Pro is very short. Too short, it's practically useless. I can only charge my iPad Pro on my desk if it's on the edge of the desk directly above my socket or adapter. I actually need a new cable. I mean, how much more could it have cost Apple to ship out this iPad Pro with a longer cable? One of the perks of sticking to a brand when it comes to gadgets is the convenience of using accessories interchangeably. It's all right if a Samsung charger can't charge my iPhone, that's great, I understand that. In fact, I want it to be like that. But I've got two iPad Pros and they don't even share the same charger. The battery life on the iPad Pro 2018 is great. The screen is also much brighter and this is good. The brightness doesn't seem to use up much battery and I think that is a good thing in my opinion because brightness on most Apple gadgets seems to drain out a lot of energy and I can say this one doesn't seem to have the same effect. The true tone is great, 
but it's nothing new. I'm just mentioning it because this is the first time I'm experiencing it. I refused to upgrade my iPad Pro 2015 to the 2017 because I just thought it was pointless. And now that I've upgraded to this one, I see that it is still pointless upgrading an iPad Pro. If you are looking to purchase a 12.9 inch iPad Pro to go paperless, get the 2017 version. The truth is, you are not missing out much. The greatest improvement made was on the Apple Pencil 2. Apple is very cunning. Then again, some could just say it's good marketing. Most of us Apple fans love having the coolest, latest, shiniest gadget whenever we can. So to make sure you will want to upgrade, they went on and made a new Apple Pencil that doesn't work on the previous generation iPad Pros, you know, which left a lot of us feeling left out and irrelevant, ancient even. The Apple Pencil 2 is beautiful. It looks like a traditional pen and you can actually trick people to think that it is. Obviously, people that are not techy. It is lighter, it is shorter, slightly thinner than the first generation Apple Pencil and this makes a huge difference when writing. It has a matte finish so it's not slippery and that's great. The charging setup makes more sense, wireless charging, so 21st century. Shortcut on the Apple Pencil is great, though I turned mine off since I'm not very comfortable using it yet. This flattened side is a bit uncomfortable. Maybe that will go away with time, I'm not sure, but I just know this round and flat combination doesn't work for me. I'm constantly turning the Apple Pencil when I'm writing trying to find a comfortable position. And while I'm turning it around, this results in me double tapping, accidentally double tapping the Apple Pencil. But whenever I find a comfortable position, it's really short-lived. So I'm still trying to get used to the Apple Pencil. Then let's talk about this constantly charging the Apple Pencil. I've been taught that constantly charging batteries kills them. I am keeping my Apple Pencil 2 off my iPad as long as it's charged. The user experience, the practicality of using this iPad Pro, it is familiar, it is not an upgrade. For an iPad that has impressive specs, it is very disappointing. Would you guys like to see a speed test or comparison video of these two iPad Pros? Let me know in the comment section down below. I still have to wait for some applications to load and the response time for my applications is identical. I honestly can't tell the difference. When you put them side by side, the new iPad Pro seems faster by a fraction of a second, which is hardly impressive. At this moment in time, I just feel like I paid more for the same iPad Pro I had before. And that is very annoying. I could conclude this review by telling you the new iPad Pro is faster and a better buy, but that would be a lie. The iPad Pro 2018 is a great device, but it is still an iPad Pro. But in terms of value for your money, it is by far the worst choice you can make, especially if you're on a budget. It is not worth upgrading from any iPad Pros if you're going to use it for just study or professional purposes, dealing with documents, it's not worth upgrading. Even for creators, I'd say if your current iPad Pro is not giving you any problems, you, you're better off sticking with the one you have. But if you've got some money to burn and you like the idea of the one terabyte storage on your mobile device, by all means, get the iPad Pro 2018. I felt this before I bought the iPad Pro 2018. I said it before I wrote an article on it, but I just thought, you know, you can't really judge a device that you've not actually used. And now that I have, I have to say that my gut was right. And it's freaking annoying. Then to answer your questions from the previous video, the first one. What are the main differences in your writing or any kind of work between the two iPad Pros? And the answer to that is the only difference so far is that the new iPad doesn't freeze on me, which is to be expected from a new device. Number two, can it replace a laptop for basic study and texting? Yes, all iPad Pros can do that without a problem. Not just the 2018 iPad Pro, all iPad Pros can replace your laptop for study and text editing. And number three, are you planning to sell your iPad Pro 2015? And the answer is no, I am not. My younger brother will be using it for university in September for taking notes on studying because I still believe that my iPad 2015 is still a beast. So until then, until September, I will be using the two iPad Pros. I've been really wanting to talk to you guys about digital minimalism, which has been really difficult for me to talk about because I was using my iPad Pro both for work and for study. 
but now I can separate them. One of you guys asked me about the bending problem associated with this model. As far as my unaided eye can tell, my iPad Pro is straight. And I also read that this usually affects 3G versions. Mine is just a Wi-Fi version. So I'm not expecting any of those problems. And that brings me to the end of this very long video. I hope you guys found it useful. Let me know what you guys think about the 2018 iPad Pro. And make sure you check out my study with me channel if you want to see how I use my iPad Pro, now iPad Pros, for my study. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.